What's up everybody, Nathan Larson here with another video for those of you guys who make music at home, whether you're a producer, an artist, a songwriter, composer, if you write and record your own music at home, this is the channel for you. And if that sounds anything like you at all, you should subscribe to the channel down below. If you haven't already done this, you've been watching my videos for a while, what are you doing? Come on. I mean, I'm not actually mad, but that'd be awesome if you would subscribe. And in my last video, I walked through the top 10 effects plugins that I use, but in this video, I'm going to be going over the top 10 sample libraries that I use. And real quick, before we jump into this, I just want to say, if you are going to be spending money on plugins, I recommend that you buy sample libraries and focus mostly on that, not effects. Now, if you're a mixing engineer, I totally understand why you'd want to just buy effects. Makes total sense. This channel is mostly for producing music. So if you're looking to make better music recording wise and producing wise, it's probably going to get you more mileage for your money if you spend it on sample libraries, not just on effects plugins. Cool. Effects plugins, super cool, super rad. And you can get effects bundled in with some of the larger bundles that you can buy. But I think that it's going to be much better for you in terms of the types of sounds that you can get with sample libraries, not effects plugins. So I'm gonna be walking through the top 10 that I use. Now this is in no particular order because it just totally depends on the production itself, but let's just jump right in. So number one is one I use just a ton. It's usually the starting point for me, even when I'm composing music, and that is Unicorda by Native Instruments. I've got it open up here. Um, there are three different modes I'm gonna show you here that you can use. You have cotton, felt, and pure. And as you can see within the piano, you can sort of see it maybe. The unicorda was sampled using only one string on every single note. If you don't know, most pianos are created using, not most, all pianos are created using multiple strings for each note, which is why it sounds rich and vibrant and whatnot. So unicorda only has one string, which gives it this really unique sound like this. So it sounds pretty mellow, pretty mild. The one that I've got pulled up here is with felt, which means that there's actually a layer of felt between the string and between the hammer that is actually hitting the string, which is why it sounds even more mellow. So there's a lot that we could talk about with each and every one of these instruments. I'm not mainly doing this to do a whole review on them, but just a couple things. You can change the color and you can also alter the space. So let's uh, do like reverb here. The space is reverb. So really good sounding reverb. You can change this by the way. And you've got the color, let's turn it down. Turn it up. So you can pretty radically change the sound itself. One of the other cool things that you can do within this instrument is if you go to the finish, you can go to style, turn that sucker on, and then go to moving or continuous. And you've got these different presets that you can go into, but you can do, let's do like mid panning. So that's pretty mellow, but let's do the next mode, which is continuous. You're really gonna hear it here. Ah. So you can get some really, really unique sounds. There's a whole layer, a whole list of things that you can do in here, but that's all I'll say about Unicorda. This is one of my go-tos. I absolutely love it. We'll be talking about another piano here soon. Native Instruments makes a lot of really great piano sounds. That brings us to number two. This is one by Heaviosity called Damage. And uh, this is, uh, yeah, this one's just a beast. It's a, it's a beast. I also think if you are going to look at buying a bundle, it probably makes the most sense to buy the Native Instruments Complete Ultimate Bundle. I think it's the best one you could possibly get. Even if you don't get the Ultimate one, maybe get one below it. I know the Ultimate one's pretty expensive, but you're literally looking at like $10,000 worth of sample libraries for like one-tenth the price. Just Keep that in mind. So damage alone, I believe, costs between three and five hundred dollars. It's a very awesome epic plugin. They now have damage too. I don't have that. I'll be just showing you regular damage. So there are two different uh, kind of folders you can pick from. You have rhythmic suites and percussive kits. Percussive kits is going to be a breakdown of all the different kits that you can actually play with your MIDI controller. The rhythmic suites is going to be a combination of loop menus. So let's just go and pull one up that I like using, the Epic Organic. I do a lot of cinematic music, cinematic pop, and things like this. So I do use damage a ton. 
I tend to not use the loops a lot, but I know a lot of people do like the loops. So basically, if you start in the low part of the keyboard, it's going to be all of your really low hits, your kicks and your toms and stuff. As you move up the keyboard, it's going to be a little bit more your, your higher toms, some snare hits, brushes on toms, and then all the way up into like hi-hats and stick hits and things like that, like this, like this. There you go. All the way to the, the lower keys like this. Yeah. Mm. And of course you have some master effects, which this is gonna basically affect every single thing that you play through it. You can play multiple notes at the same time to basically build your own kits like this. Here's one. I'll play another one on top of it here in time. That was not very good. Let's try that again. So basically you can play as many as you want. Here I'll do like three. So pretty cool, and uh, there's a lot of cool things you can do in there. I'm trying to go fast so this isn't a super long video, but then you can go into the percussive kits. Um, so I'll just do like Epic Organic Drums. Let's do the Studio Armageddon Ensemble, which is similar to what you just heard there. Now we can play the individual pieces. Anyway, there's a ton of really cool stuff. I use this more often so I can have a lot more control over the things that I'm doing. Again, you have these master effects like distortion. Yeah, you can get pretty crazy with that. You have the stage where it sounds. So that's pretty cool. And you also have these uh, kind of an EQ filters and then you have this damage mode or pu uh, punish mode which is like compression distortion stuff all slapped in together into one epic dial. So that's my next one, damage. That brings us to number three. The number three is Signal by Output. This is also hosted within the Contact Player. This one's pretty stinking legit. Uh, it's it's. I've got to say, Output is a very impressive company. Um, the libraries that they make and the effects that they make, I mentioned in my last video, the movement effect is pretty dope. It's kind of based on some of their pulse engines. Signal is their pulse engine. To kind of give you just the really quick overview of how this thing works, Basically what it does is you have two different sources. You can see down here I have sign pluck and muted guitar, and then you can have two different rhythms for each source. You can see I have a 16th note arpeggio, and then I have a 16th note um, step, which uh, you can do step or wave. And then the other one is a 16th note arpeggio and a 16th note step, and you can uh, alter basically every single aspect of this. It's It's really pretty staggering and it can get very confusing very fast, but it's very easy to just manipulate and get things going. Then you have these four macro controls. Let's just play this sound. So we have it open to close. So it's more of like a filter. It's not doing a whole lot. You can change the rhythm. That's just for this specific preset. You can change it based on different presets. You can also go in here and start adding different effects in here so we could add like tape saturation. This is, you can basically change which one you want it on, whether it's on the first sound or the second sound, or you can go in here to global and have all these global effects to affect everything. So there's a lot of really cool stuff that you can get into and you can actually go into the sound sources themselves and pick different ones. So this is a sign pluck. So what if we change it to a sub saw? or dirty motion. So you can get the idea, you can start changing the sounds. You also have regular instruments, so I could do like a felt piano. So you can get really crazy in terms of, of the types of sounds you can get with this instrument, and there are a crap ton of presets. Uh, I mean, you can see here, you can search based on all sorts of different filters. So let's do one like this. Um, let's do like Radiant Shimmer. Okay, let's see what that sounds like. Ooh. Nice, that's pretty cool. But pulse engine signal, this thing is, is it's dope, it's awesome, I love it. That's number three. That takes us to number four, and that is another Native Instruments one, and that is Monarch. Monarch is dope. It's basically based on the Moog uh, sub bass 
synth thing. Anyway, it sounds freaking dope. You have a lot of presets, of course. I actually, this is one that I don't use presets a ton. Come on, let's get out of here. Get out of here. Come on. Um, I like actually just manipulating the snot out of this thing. It is so much fun. I'm just going to play it for a second. This is where you can get like, if you want to make music that is basically, uh, what's that TV show with uh, the kids, the Netflix series, it's scary. She She's able to move things with her mind. Oh my gosh. Stranger Things. <laughs> How did I forget that? <laughs> Stranger Things. If you want to make your stuff sound like Stranger Things, this is how you get it. Here, I'll show you what this sounds like. Just right out of the box. Oh, yeah. And then, of course, we can change all sorts of things. We can... Let's go. And... Oh, that one's not really on. It just sounds so good. Um, you can, let's see, let's turn this one up here. Let's just kind of mess around with some stuff here. Let's turn that noise down. I, I could just play with this for so long. It would take me a little bit a little bit longer to actually build like an entire sound. I use this a ton for bass sounds though, as I'm sure you're not surprised by. Um, let's go ahead and I could play with this for just hours on end and just come up with fun stuff. That is number four, Monarch. That brings us to number five, and it is actually one built right into Logic Pro, and that is Alchemy. This thing is super underrated. I, uh, I've talked about Alchemy before. This is one that a lot of times I will just open up and just start looking through presets and see what I can find. I really like a lot of the bass sounds that I can come up with. Uh, I found some really cool like synthesizers and pads and keys and all sorts of stuff. Let's just pull one up here. Arctic Sun. Let's see what this sounds like. Yeah, pretty sweet. Then you have these macro controls over here where you can basically change the entire... You, of course, can alter reverb. You can alter cutoff. You can go in here, add an arpeggiator. You can add different effects to it. And, of course, you can look at a simple mode and an advanced mode. So this thing is... It is just super underrated. I think this is one of the better plugins within Logic. I love it. You can find some really fantastic sounds in there and then just manipulate the snot out of them. I'm not one of those guys who really like starting from scratch and then building things up. I want to find a preset and then just completely make it my own. And uh, Alchemy is very easy, very easy to use. So that's one that I do recommend. That That's, that's pretty much all I got to say about that. Pretty, pretty straightforward. That brings us to number, are we on five or six? Whatever the next one is, <laughs> and that is battery four. I use battery four a lot for percussion. I'm gonna open this up. It's also a uh, good for dropping in samples. So if you're using drum samples, instead of dropping in the audio and then having like copy, paste, copy, paste, you can just drop it into one of these cells uh, like this. That sounds terrible. So within here, you can do different kits as well as different samples. For me, typically, I'm just finding samples in here because you can go in, let's say I wanna clap, and you can just listen to all of them. Oh, that's cool. So once you pull up the sample, then you can start getting really pretty crazy with it. You can start uh, adjusting like the tune. Okay, 
uh, you can reverse it. We can also adjust the length. We can uh, do compression, filters, there's some envelopes you can add, you have different effects you can do, you can add saturation, lo-fi, basically you can do everything you could do effects-wise with other third-party effects or other plugins that you have, but you can just do it right within battery itself, it's cool. Each individual sound has its own whole basically thing you can do. So all these effects I'm doing, it's just for this one sound, and then I could do different ones for different sounds. So I oftentimes will go to uh, battery for kicks, for snares and for claps, for hi-hats, things like that. Um, and then I will also sometimes use battery to drop other samples into battery. So let's say I find a sample I like on arcade, I'll bounce it down to audio and then drop it into battery sometimes. Let's just drop that in. Oh. So let's take this one, we can add some saturation. So obviously you can get pretty crazy with it. Um, I'm not gonna go super deep into it, but this is another Native Instruments one. You can also get expansion packs and whatnot for it as well, but Battery 4, I use it quite frequently. Talking about drums, that brings us to the next one, which I forgot what, what number we're on. We're, we're either on like six or seven or something like that. That one would be Drum Lab. I really like Drum Lab. If you haven't noticed, I really like Native Instruments. Native Instruments is just incredible. I think they make some of the best sample libraries you could possibly get. I also use East West, and I, I you know, Spitfire is pretty good too. But Drum Lab is great. This is what it sounds like. Literally, just I pulled it up, and we'll see what we can get. Yeah, okay. So it's a, you know, that's whatever. But then what's, what's cool is we can go in here and of course we have all the different presets uh, that we can find. But what I like is that you can take these sounds and then you can just very simply be like, I want it fat. So we'll do that. It's still loading here. So while that's loading, I'm just gonna explain. Basically every sound that it has, has an acoustic one and an electric one. So you can see basically down here, I'm looking at a snare. I got Kurt snare, which is the acoustic one and then dropsy snare, which is the electric one. So let's let's do all the way uh, down here. So we can change these individual sounds. We've got tons of options. Let's do like tape layer. And we've got our different snare options. So like, uh, let's do like deep snare. Then we can do like 50-50. Still loading here. There we go. But then we've got the kick. So there's a lot of really cool stuff that you can do in here. I just really think this is a great sounding, uh, yeah, I don't know, it just sounds great. I use it a lot and uh, I found a lot of success with it. I typically, I'll just say this, I don't like it for cymbals and I don't like it for uh, for toms, but when it comes to kicks and snares, I don't know, I just, I just feel like I have a lot of options to use with it that I do tend to do. So that's that one, Drum Lab. The next one is one that I used for so, so long, back in the day when I got my very first bundle from Native Instruments, the Native Instruments Ultimate, Complete Ultimate 9, and that would be the Giant. This thing, and I actually have a video that I made like literally three, four years ago uh, on, this, on this instrument because I love it so much. This is a great sounding piano. Um, this was the one that I used primarily as the instrument that I started with before I got Unicorda. Um, so I'm just gonna show you how this sounds right out of the gate. So nothing crazy. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just start changing some things. So this XXL, I like that, it makes it sound a little bigger. I'm gonna make it soft. You can open up all these different parameters. I'm gonna turn overtones on, stereo image swap. I'm gonna do some things really quickly just to turn the hammer up. That gives it a lot more realistic sound. Tone, tone, tone. Let's turn the bass up, air up. Let's add a little bit of compression. Do that. And then let's put a little more reverb up in this joint. Here we go.
just overall a really great sounding piano. I think this is one of the better sounding pianos that you can get out there that's just a sampled piano. The Gentleman is also really good. I didn't talk about that because I just wanted to keep it to 10. Uh, but the Gentleman is another really good one that I like if you want to go for more of that just traditional upright piano sound, which a lot of times I do like that more intimate sound. The Giant, you can make it sound huge if you turn this to like hard. Let's Just stuff like that. It's a great, great instrument. The Giant is one I use quite a lot if I just want a regular piano sound. All right, that brings us to number nine. I think we're on number nine, and that is Arcade by Output. Now, this isn't really a sampled library. It sort of is. It's, it's more of like a loop library. Anyway, it, it's cool. I like this a lot. This is sometimes where I go when I just need a little bit of inspiration. Um, it works very similarly to Splice. I don't have Splice, never have, but uh, I like that you can just open it up straight within your DAW, and then as long as you have an internet connection, you can download things directly into the interface. So I'm just going to show you a couple things that I personally like. Um, I really like Particles. Again, I do a lot of cinematic pop, so I'll just pull up one that I already have saved. So this is like strings. I actually think I've used that one before. And then you can control the pitch and you can lock it to the key that you're in. You can change the pitch uh, by changing different notes in the lower register to alter the pitch um, if you're using pitched things. Um, let's go and do like acoustic textures. I like this one. And since it's output, they have the four macro controls as well. Every single one has its own unique sounds. Um, and then, of course, uh, you can look at different lines for different things. Uh, they've colla recently collaborated with Spitfire. I got some of these. Let's just show you this. Yeah. And of course, they also have percussion as well. Um, so don't think they don't have percussion. They have vocal, the distant voices. I use this uh, quite a few times. Their vocal licks are just incredible. I love it. And then I'll bounce it down to audio in many cases. Or if I just like how it sounds, I will just use it as is. This is a, there's like a lot you could talk about in this one. Uh, you can save things. You can look at kits. You can obviously search uh, based on what you're looking for. Uh, and they come out with new stuff all the time. And this is, this is kind of where I go when I'm just like lacking inspiration. I just need something to give me an idea. And then I'll go here, start, and then I can just start getting to work. And also, this is sometimes where I go after something has already been produced for a little while, it's feeling pretty full, but I'm missing just a little extra something, and I'll go and start browsing in here, and typically I can find what I'm looking for that would fit. And it's pretty great. So Arcade by Output, I think it's like 10 bucks a month or something like that, but uh, it's pretty sweet. And that brings us to number 10, and this one is a little bit more unique. Like I said, this is in no particular order. This is a newer one that I got, and that is Rise and Hit um, for transitional stuff and for just big, awesome stuff. I mean, I've been using this in my pop music, cinematic pop music. It just sounds, yeah, uh, it sounds great. I'm just gonna show this to you. Mmm. So we could start making some changes in terms of what specific percussive sounds we get. So we have the rise, and then of course you have the hit, which has the tail. So you can manipulate both sides of this. You can get everything from kind of regular sounding-ish kind of rises like this. With the percussion. All the way to like orchestral string rises to really out of this world wacky rises. You can also uh, tempo sync this. So this is gonna have the rise time in four bars or not four bars, so four beats, I can change it to two. One. You can also do seconds. So we could do like 12 bars, or 12, 12 beats. Here we go. I don't know why I keep saying bars. There it goes. So pretty cool. I'm gonna show you just a couple other little presets that you can use. So you can look in here, you have orchestral, hybrid stuff, into the void, percussion, smooth, swooshes, pure synth, subs. Let's do like a sub. Let's just do like a bass kick sub. This is a huge instrument, so it does typically take a little bit of time to load. Let's do like four bars or four beats. Yeah. There you go. Pretty bland. 
I'll do another one. Let's do a uh, orchestral one, pure violins. Let's see how that one sounds. Yeah. Anyway, this is just a really dope, just crazy instrument. I use this a lot for transitions and things like that. Uh, that's one of the things that I think a lot of people miss is just the transitional stuff. And this is one of those one of those libraries that you can basically get any kind of transition you want with risers and hits and things like that. And uh, it's a very deep instrument. So there's a ton of options, takes a ton of research and not research, but it takes a ton of just exploring the instrument itself to figure out what it's going to do and how it's going to sound and things like that to find the ones that you want, which that's one of the more annoying aspects of it. It does take just a lot of tinkering to find the right one, but it's a heck of a lot faster than trying to build it yourself with three or four different instruments and things like that. So it saves a lot of time on the transitional stuff. There you have it. Those are my top 10 favorite sample libraries in no particular order that I use in my own productions. I left out all sorts of ones. I, I use East West. I have some Spitfire. It's really hard to just pick 10. Um, and I didn't really want to go into the orchestral stuff so much because I don't really have a favorite. It's just different things for different purposes. I feel like that requires its own video in its own right rather than a video like this. But if you like this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel for more videos like these. I upload on a regular basis and click the like, leave a comment. I'd love to hear from you guys and we'll see you in the next one.